then this Life After Power Rangers thing yeah. happens, which is a really cool project. So what was, and I, and I, I think I may have heard some of this before in your Instagram posts and whatnot, mm-hmm. but tell me how, how this came, came to be. I was editing something and I get a text from Jay Diaz, the Jay Diaz, as he <laughs> likes being called. He has had um, a successful show on Yahoo called The Flip Side. In my opinion, he's one of the more brilliant storytellers I've ever worked with, probably the most brilliant. Um, if only he knew that, which I tell him all the time. I get a text from him saying, have you ever thought of doing a mockumentary of what it's like for a retired Power Ranger? And I said, I would do anything Power Rangers. <laughs> and he goes, let's do it. And I stopped editing and I went out into my living room and I called him. I said, are you serious about this? I will go online right now and I will buy a Green Ranger outfit. We talked about it. He goes, I'll do one episode. If we enjoy it, I'll do more. And I said, that's enough for me. I went online. I went to a Japan, a Chinese website, filled out my specs of like every measurement that I am <laughs> and sent it away. And three weeks later, I got the Green Ranger suit. My mother had reluctantly bought me the Green Ranger helmet mm. for like Christmas or my birthday, my birthday the year before. So I had that already. What, what was the reluctance? Because I'm a 30 plus year old man <laughs> and my mother didn't want to buy me a green Power Ranger. Fair home. enough. But she also bought me the uh, Morpher mm. this or two years ago. And the helmet was a few years ago. Excellent. So she's, but she never wants to. And this year I sent away for the green dagger to like my in-laws and my parents and my sister and no one got it for me. <laughs> so I bought it myself <laughs> the day after Christmas. Um, so yeah, Jay and I just talked about like some fun things of like, what if he's still trapped in the suit? He can't get out. How can't, why can't he get out? Ah, there's something messed up with the morpho. We'll figure that out down the road if we need to. We'll just, nice. let's not worry about that right now. And then we just got together and I, I called in, I called up my local gym called up the, my acting studio. I called up the bar next to my acting studio. And I was like, can we film in these places? And they were like, and I was like, here's the concept. It's really stupid. We'll give you credit. And all of them said yes in a heartbeat. Nice. So, and I'm, and that was all improvised, you said, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have a, you, you kind of, did you have the pilot story kind of hashed out or did you just kind of go with it? Jay did and he said, yes, okay. we did. We just wanted to see a day in the life of a Power Ranger. Sure. So it was like, breakfast, going to the gym. Uh, I thought it'd be fun if he was a Lyft driver um, because then we wouldn't need an office space if he was right. just like a telemarketer, which is another idea we had. Um, and an acting studio, which we had already. So if he's in Los Angeles trying to be an actor, it all kind of makes sense, which right, kind of right. just came together. And then Jay just filmed it. And like, it's crazy. Like we have these ideas and then Jay just does it. And then he sends me the episode th- right after we wrap. Like, he probably sent me that episode that night. And I'm like, what the hell, Jay? How do right, you do right. He's a ninja. <laughs> yeah, so it was all in his brain. So you decide to do more. Yeah. And do you flesh out the whole next, what is there, six? So the whole next five? No, no. Because I thought this in, in episode two when I met up with the Pink Ranger, mm-hmm. I thought that she and I were going to get together. And then in episode like three or four, Jay was like, no, in episode three, like when I went over to meet her at night, mm-hmm. I don't want to spoil it because everyone who's listening should go watch it. Like you should go watch it. Uh, the reveal of what happens in episode three of why I really went over there. I was like, no, but I thought I was like getting with the pink <laughs> ranger. Um, so, yeah, no, we didn't plan it out really at all. And then. It was all improv. So like Josh, who played the Red Ranger, talked about selling his morpher on eBay to a kid. <laughs> right. And so then in episode five or six or whatever, we had to then go on a flight to get that morpher. And we had to find a kid who was Courtney Richards' son who played the Black Ranger, that our Black Ranger, right, right. not Walter. Yep. Um, and we kind of just pieced together like, okay, what have we improvised? What have we said? How do we wrap this thing up? Yeah. And then yep. with the presence of the actual Rangers. Well, so yeah, so I was going to say, how do you get, you get a couple big guest stars. How, how does that happen? So David Yost, the original Blue Ranger, I had like tagged him in a story or something or messaged him. 
and he had responded to it mm. a few months ago. So that means on Instagram that I am no longer in his other inbox. I am in his active inbox, which I knew. Nice. So I was like, if I message him, he will get it. He will get a notification as opposed to someone who he's never interacted with before. So I, I painstakingly thought of exactly what I was going to say. And I basically said, Power Rangers are reason I'm in Los Angeles. I'm doing this thing. If you have any interest in being in it, it would be a dream come true for me. Here's the first episode. He responded like, this is great. I'm in. What do you need from me? Wow. And I freaked the hell out. <laughs> freaked out. <clears throat> from there, I posted a photo of him. That photo got like tons of likes and shares and all that fun stuff. And people are like, oh my God, this is great. The series is getting, you know, more and more active. We got some write-ups. And from there, a buddy of mine, Al, messaged me on Facebook. He was like, hey, I'm friends with Walter Emmanuel Jones, who's the original Black Ranger. And at that time, I was getting a lot of messages from a lot of people in LA being like, I know this Ranger. I know this <laughs> Ranger. But I was like, let's keep to the originals because there's something special about that. Sure. I, I was like, here's his number. He's awaiting your call. I texted Jay. I was like, I'm calling Walter Emanuel Jones. So I like took some heavy breaths and I called Walter. I talked to him for 20 minutes and he was like, yeah, I'm down. I was like, we'll need you for an hour. You play the director of a hemorrhoid cream commercial. <laughs> it's all improv. And he was, I mean, he killed it. He, I, that's my favorite scene in the entire series, I think, is he is, I just think it's he's, ridiculous. He's great. And he's great. Yeah. And now like, like I text with David, like Dave, when I asked about being pinned, he responded to me and he was like, it's great because they like we had a, a full conversation about nice. it, which is just so surreal to me. So, and, I mean, this seems like I'm sure it's an obvious answer, but I think it's worth worth talking about is how impactful that must have been to you to go from nine year old that influence to that project. Yeah. Like, I mean, how much does that impact you? How much did that, uh, you know, feel like uh I don't know, feel like completing something that you've been thinking about your whole creative career so far. Yeah, it was such a like surreal dream. It was such a dream. And even looking back on it is like, I didn't, I made maybe like 10 cents on that thing. Mm -hmm. I think one day it'll get 10 million views. I have no doubt in my mind. But as of now, I've, I've lost money on that. Sure. I've sunk money into it. But I don't care about any of that because the experience that I had with that and like the story we got to tell and wearing that costume around LA and everyone staring at us and working with the original Rangers is not something that I could have ever predicted. Like my best friend, when I was texting with him, who was also an avid Power Rangers fan growing up, not anymore because he actually grew up, whereas I <laughs> have not. He's like, dude, this is your dream. Like th you are filming with the original Power Rangers that you grew up as your heroes. And it, to me, I still can't believe that it happened. Like, I, and I told David, I was like, working with you was just as cool as the Coen brothers. Like you have been my idol and my, my dream, sure. my hero my entire life. Right. So yeah, it's, it, there's a lot there. <laughs> there's a lot.